Hey guys, it's Melody Asani. This is my um, video blog about the final push and the final few weeks of pregnancy. I'm gonna share a lot of my tips and about the experiences and things that I um, have bought and why we've bought them and things like that. I know you guys have been contacting me and asking some questions and stuff, so hopefully this will answer your question. I was gonna write a blog, but I thought I might as well do the video. This is the mic, by the way, in case you're wondering what the hell is that black thing, just like pointing weirdly up on the screen. And um, I am now midway through being 38 weeks pregnant. Let me show you my, my bump, <laughs> if I can fit. <laughs> Here it is, so 38 weeks pregnant, and it's almost here, and I can't believe how soon um, it is until the ninny comes. So I'm due, basically, for those of you who don't count in weeks, and are like, what the hell does 38 weeks mean? Um, I'm due in just over a week, so it's, yeah, ready to pop. Okay, so generally, I have found pregnancy, because you, you just don't know what to expect, do you? I mean, how can you imagine what pregnancy and, and finding out you're having a baby and becoming a mum will feel like? You just, you just can't. And it's always something you kind of feel like, oh, I want to do that one day, but you just can't simply imagine it until it happens to you. And this is obviously, I haven't even had the baby yet, so just pregnancy has felt incredible. I think that it's one of the most beautiful feelings in the world. Like I said to my husband, I know that obviously I'm going to have to go through the pain of giving birth and everything, but I just feel so sorry for men that they don't get to experience this incredible feeling, but he just laughed and said he can do without. So, <laughs> But I think it's a privilege. I think it's an incredible privilege, and I've been so grateful for, you know, having this experience. And your body does change and you go through things that, you know, your your body's constantly kind of evolving and doing things that you're not used to and, you know, like getting up on the scales and seeing the figures that I'm seeing now compared to what I was, you know, before I was pregnant is, is crazy. But it's just such a beautiful thing to know that there's actual life growing inside of you. And it's just been an incredible experience for me. Um as I'm sure it is for many. Um, so overall, it's been incredible and I've really enjoyed, I'm gonna share some um, baby shower tips and some baby moon stuff and I've just enjoyed the whole process and things, you know, doing things and enjoying it and celebrating it. So, but it's not all good. Um, one of the main things I'm finding the hardest so during the first, so I've, I've been writing blogs throughout, so I've wrote one from the first trimester and everything, and as you know, I had nausea, so it was a bit, it was, it was a bit tough, I mean, it was a bit inconvenient, I mean, I remember in my early part of the pregnancy, I was in a meeting with somebody, and I hadn't told anyone I was pregnant yet, and as this person was talking, I was just like, you know, gonna throw up, and really awkward, and just not fun at all, but, you know, aside from that, it's just been really, really good and quite plain sailing, thankfully. But in this final stage, the thing that I'm finding the hardest ever is the itching. My God, ah, I just, sometimes I just want to pull my skin off, literally. Um, obviously, the skin is expanding, especially, you know, if you're, you know, you're fit and you're, you know, thin and, you know, your skin's not used to being this size, like your stomach is not used to... So obviously it stretches, whoever you are, it's your skin is going to stretch. And that is, it causes lots of like itching around here and everywhere. And for me, I don't know why, and I don't know, I haven't spoken to anyone who's also experienced this, so let me know if you've also had this. It's been itching like on my arms and like neck and my face, it's just been, I don't know why, but it drives me mad. And I tweeted on Instagram saying that like, you know, uh, what can you do? And you guys gave me lots of good tips, but I have now found something that really, really works. Obviously, if your skin is dry, so if it's cracking and it's stretching and, you know, that'll happen anyway throughout pregnancy, then obviously this will, you know, is a lifesaver, bio oil. So bio oil, you can buy it from anywhere. If you have a car boot near you, actually, 
Um, so buy or I think this size, this big size in boots or something is like 20 quid if I'm not mistaken. I bought this from um, uh, one of the kind of the main suppliers in a car boot sale and I bought two for £17. And you, you're going to use so many of them. So, you know, if you can get it cheaper, get it cheap. Just make sure it's it's authentic and genuine and, you know, and this is. So bio oil is really, really good and just helps throughout pregnancy to prevent any stretch marks. So put it everywhere and behind you and on your lower back and everywhere. Um, so it's really, really good. So make sure you keep using that throughout pregnancy. And this helps you know prevent as I say stretch marks and also if your skin is dry so you need to be using this and putting this on or something the other really good thing is olive oil so olive oil is is obviously natural and that's really really good as well okay but with the itching specifically the thing that I found the most lit I love this thing literally love it is calamine lotion so calamine lotion you can get this from anywhere again it's like one pound fifty for a bottle or something like that um you can get it from any uh, you know pharmacy you know like boots or anything so calamine is brilliant and people use this for like if you get chicken pox or any kind of thing that causes itching it just soothes the skin and kind of dries it up and prevents you from itching it so it really, really helped me. And all you do is you've got to shake the bottle up first and then use a cotton wool. Um, and co cotton wool pads are the best. And then just go like that onto the cotton wool and then just dab it on wherever it is that's itching. It should go like a whitish colour and it dries up and it's kind of like a whitish powdery kind of colour. So that's, um, you know, if you're really, really itching, try this because it's amazing. The other thing that um, I tried as well was um, this cream, which I can't pronounce, aqueous cream, I think. So it looks like that. And again, this is like £1.50 or £1.40 or whatever from, you can buy it anywhere. So um, the midwife suggested I use this and the doctor suggested I use this. I found this the most useful personally, but to be honest, I haven't got around to using this so much because I found this so effective. But apparently this is really good too. It does the same thing. It just soothes the skin and stops it from itching. So if you're itching and you're going crazy like me, then try that. The only tip I would say though is that when you're using this, obviously this dries the skin and stops it from itching. But because your skin is expanding and it's kind of, um, you know, stretching, you don't want it to be too dry. So you've got to use bio oil first, let that seep into your skin and so moisturising the skin so you're not itching because it's too dry and then put the calamine on it. OK, so that should hopefully help you. But everyone's got different things. So you might hate, you might have lots of other things that you're going to try. But the only thing is keep it as natural as possible. I would avoid, some of you tweeted me saying like use um, something with nuts, or, um, like almond oil and things like that. I wouldn't venture into trying new things It's like that has nuts in it and things like that just because it could irritate the skin like the doctor said that it's probably not best to go down that route. These things are, are much better and, and you know, um, so that's what I was advised and it's working. So just keep it as natural as possible. You don't want to make it worse or ir irritate your skin and cause new problems for yourself. Um, so what else? So the other things that I found are really, really useful um, is the parent craft classes that my husband and I went to. They're um, provided by your local community midwife or at the children's centre, your local children's centre. I've got heartburn, by the way. <laughs> Throughout. Here, oh, heartburn. Heartburn is so... Let me come back to a parent couple. Heartburn is so common, okay? And, like, everybody gets it throughout pregnancy, I think. Um, it's basically the baby pushing up acid, and it goes into your throat. And I don't mean to... If you're watching this and you're not pregnant, I don't mean to make this sound disgusting, but basically, the beginning of when you're going to throw up is kind of how heartburn feels in pregnancy so it's acid coming up um 
I've got it, I've got it now, it comes and goes. But the thing that really, really helps is milk. So as soon as you've got heartburn, just have a bit of milk. You know, it's natural as well, milk is good for you anyway. So drink a bit of milk. I mean, the doctor did give me medicine, like medicine for heartburn, but I haven't touched it. And I just, I'd rather not take any medicine and just keep it natural, keep it healthy. Milk helps, so just have a bit of milk and that will help your heart burn. It's so useful. I've been going through gallons of milk literally during my... I've never drank so much milk. And I lived in Sweden, for God's sake, where we drink a lot of milk. So, so milk really helps heart burn. Going back to the parent craft classes, so useful to cover everything from breastfeeding to what you do when the baby's born, what you do during labour. Really, really useful. They give you lots of you know, unbiased medical information, everything. And you get to meet people in your community who are pregnant as well and all of this. And it's a good thing for you and your husband or partner or mum, if you, you know, or whatever, to go along to and to do together. And it's for free as well. I mean, where I live, it's for free. And it, the classes were so useful, so great. Lots of things I didn't know. So make sure you find out where they are and go to them. Why not? You know, so... And that's a really good thing. Um, my other tip is Google Emma's Diary and go on to Emma's Diary and make sure you get the packs that are available to you um, for free. So um, those packs contain um, lots of free products at each stage of your pregnancy. So you'll have like, I think it's three vouchers that you get. So you, you can claim them at different points of your pregnancy or there might be four actually and lots of vouchers for lots of different things. But these packs that I'm talking about, you get like free products, you get to try lots of different things, you get 50% off um, diapers and things like that. It's just useful and it's just, once you sign up as well, they'll send you like updates for what your body's going through during pregnancy and lots of things like that, which might be useful. And so, um, yeah. And the other thing that I think is really important um, is that you, I mean, once the baby comes, I imagine that life will obviously change and your demand of your time as a mother um, or a father, you know, will be um, really quite different to what it, what it is now. And that may not leave a lot of time to spend together with your loved ones. So during my pregnancy, I've been spending so much time with my family and um, my husband particularly, I mean, we've been doing like lots of date nights and spending quality time together. And I think that that's really important. And those conversations about like, so, you know, what are you feeling about becoming a mother or a father? And, you know, um, like how, w w like what three qualities would you want him to possess, you know, our child to have? Like we, we did this separately, like he thought of three, I thought of three, and then we shared them and our, our first top one was um, the same. And it was just an interesting conversation to have. And you're probably wondering what the top one was, aren't you? The first one that we both chose, the most important thing that we want our child to possess is kindness, to be kind to people. And, um, you know, and it was a really useful conversation. The other day we went out for Nando's and we were talking about like our expectations once the baby comes and my expectations of him and his expectations of me so that we don't have those problems down the line where I'm feeling tired and he's feeling tired and frustrated and we're arguing over what our expectations should be when it's always best to have the conversations sooner. And obviously a lot of those things you won't know until you're in the situation, obviously, but it was just really helpful and over chicken and, you know, peri peri chips and coleslaw. That's my staple thing, half a chicken, peri peri chips and coleslaw, you know, like talking about that, you know, and you, you know, spend some quality time together. Just, you know, do, do simple things like go for walks or whatever, whatever it is that, you know, you enjoy doing just and and fellas make your lady feel special. She's carrying a baby. She's going to give birth to your child and you know, she's sacrificing and, you know, and you are as well, but, you know, make her feel special, make her feel beautiful and take good care of her and do as much as you can to help. And, you know, and I think that's so important and, you know, a really vital thing that a man can do for his, his, you know, for his partner is to make her feel really special and do everything he can to help. 
to take the stress off her. And that brings me on to the other thing. It's so important to not feel, you know, like stressed and worked up and anxious. Obviously, you're going to feel a level of stress and anxiety because you're about to experience this huge thing. And I've been as well, like especially obviously running a business and I've got so much going on, so much to do. And I feel like I'm up against the clock, you know, and almost out of time and it can be stressful. Of course it can. I've had a few sleepless nights thinking about all the things that we have to do. I had such a bad dream, which is a reflection of a level of anxiety about preparing and, you know, making sure I know everything before the baby comes. But as much as I can and as much as you can, you're going to have to take care of yourself. Like I go swimming, which I find really relaxing because obviously it carries your weight and, you know, it's really healthy and I'm, I can feel it's good for the baby and I go for walks, I do things I enjoy, like I take some time out to do the things that I enjoy doing, so I'm calm and I'm happy, and feeling happy isn't just a good thing generally, of course it is generally, but it just sends like happy vibes to your baby, and you know, your baby will, it, it, it doesn't, it, 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 the way that it works, I've been reading about this um, in like lots of statistics and, and lots of research and everything, and your baby doesn't stop start learning and doesn't start becoming the person it is once it's born. It becomes the person it is and it shapes and learns while still in your womb, you know, you're now during pregnancy. And you shape those things by what you eat, how you feel, how you speak, all of these things. It's so, so interesting. There's lots of really interesting TEDx talks and TED talks about this as well, if you're interested to look it up further. And let me know and I can tweet you a link or whatever. But really, really interesting. So so think about that, you know. So if you're constantly stressed or anxiety or raising your voice and being angry, then um, that won't, you know, have a positive effect on your baby. And so try and avoid that as much as possible and just be happy and enjoy the journey as much as you can. Um, okay, the other thing that we have done that I think is quite an incredible thing if you um, if this if this kind of thing interests you is that um, from the second I found out that I was pregnant we started a video diary so we just have like a normal camera just let me show it to you just like this so I'm gonna do a video diary today actually for the nanny so um, when we found out that we were pregnant um, we recorded a vlog just like um, my husband and I just saying that, you know, oh my God, we just found out we're pregnant and how we feel and, you know, and it's just so incredible. And we, when I told my mum, so that same night we drove to my mum's house, I can't, I can't not tell my mum like anything because I have to tell her, like I will burst. So we drove to my mum's house the night we found out I was pregnant and I hid the camera in the living room and filmed when I told her that I was pregnant. I also filmed when I told my brother and sister that I was pregnant secretly. We filmed going into finding out the sex and just outside the room, we were like a okay, final prediction time. And then after we knew the sex, we did a video then. We did a video um, of lots of highlights, like on my baby shower day, I did a video um, in the nursery and we put in the nursery together. Um, we did a video about um, like the qualities that we want the ninny to possess and lots of different things. And um, we're going to put it all into one video and it will be such an incredible, invaluable thing, I think, throughout the pregnancy. Because you forget how you feel. You forget, you forget what you were feeling at that point, you know. And so do something like that, you know, because it's just an incredible thing, if you're interested in it, and if you have time, or if you think that it's helpful, then um, I think it's a really, really cool thing, um, so yeah, right, so moving on from the tips to um, travel system, and car seat, and the um, changing bag, okay, it was an absolute minefield trying to understand what travel system is best, it, the hardest thing ever, it, it literally was the hardest thing ever to choose what travels, and people were like, well, it depends on what feels right for you, and it's like, I've never pushed a pram, and a, I mean, what the hell is a travel system, what does that even mean, you know, and I went in, and I was like, okay, we're looking for a buggy, or pram, or whatever it's called, I, I have zero experience, 
And they were like, oh, travel system, la la la. And I'm like, no, not a travel system. It's for the. Pay. I was like, what? What are they talking about? It was crazy confusing. It really is, and it's one of the most important things because it'll go from zero to four years old, and it costs a fortune. So you want to make the right decision. So I'll just talk you through what we found and the pros and cons of some of the main brands that we saw, and hopefully that'll help and tell you what we chose in the end. So um, we looked at a few. Firstly, I wanted something that was light, that was safe. And that was easy to put together and put down and put into the um, boot of my car. So those are probably the most important things. I mean, if something's really chunky, you know, really difficult to put up and put down, it's just not useful. And obviously you want it to be safe. So um, we looked at the Quinny, um, the Quinny, um, what's it called? I've got baby brain. Um, the new one of the Quinny, I can't remember what it was called. Okay, so that one's really compact, it looks great, really easy to push, I really, really liked it. The problem and the deal breaker for me was the basket underneath the Quinny. It's tiny. What is wrong with them? Why have they put it so far up to the, to the thick? I mean, you can't fit anything in there. And you need your basket because you're going to have to put stuff in there. You can't carry on your shoulders while you're pushing. No, no, no. Deal breaker for me. So, unfortunately, the Quinny was out. Um, the, um, the Bugaboo, I am not a fan of the Bugaboo. I think it's overpriced. I think that it's just the brand. I think that they're not actually that good to push. I think that it feels really, really chunky. Having said that, I was quite impressed with the Chameleon, but the only problem with the Chameleon Bugaboo, for me, the deal breaker was, and although it looked, it comes in an amazing colour as well, it comes in like a creamy sand colour, it just looks brilliant and compact. And that one was the best one of the bugaboos that I saw and tried. But the deal breaker was that I'm too short to, and basically the, the, the handle that you push, it was too high and it couldn't go any lower, and so my arms were a bit too far up, so I, I would get a backache, basically, if I pushed it for a length of time, so it was a deal breaker. Um, some of the other brands, like the Silver Cross Wayfarer, was good, I mean, the Surf 2 was good, I thought, out of the Silver Cross Way, out of the Silver Cross, the Surf 2 was the best one, I thought, and it's a mainstream thing, you know, a lot of people use it, but I found it too fiddly to put down and put up. It was really difficult and I just couldn't be bothered with dealing with it. But, you know, I've heard good things about them. So Silver Cross Wayfarer is a standard kind of thing and it, it seems good. The one that we went for in the end was the Eye Candy. So we've gone for the Eye Candy Peach 3. Um, in a truffle colour. So the eye candy I found was light, it was easy to put down and put up. It stands on its own as well, which is something the Silver Cross Surf 2 doesn't do. That was the deal breaker with that one is it doesn't actually stand by itself. You've got to put it flat, which if you're putting it by the door, it just takes so much space. So the eye candy peach three stands on its own. So that was a really, really good thing. And it's just, it's just easy all around. It goes up, down, it comes in great colors. It looks good. It's just easy to use. I think it's good for the baby. So I really, really like that. So we've gone for the eye candy peach three and um, I would recommend it, but it, it is a bit pricey. So um, have a look and look at your options, but th that's what I found. So the bag, the changing bag, oh, let me go to the car seat first. Car seat, okay, so the top three are, a lot of people use um, the, what's it called? Oh, God, I can't remember anything. Um, what is it called? The one that everybody uses, the car seat that everybody uses, what's it called? Um... literally slipped my mind okay I, I can't remember right now the top two for us though the best ones that we were considering was the be safe and the, the so the be safe easy the easy plus one so the be safe one and the um other one which we went for in the end was the um at on cue um 
I just, literally, this has never happened to me. I usually have a really sharp mind and I never forget things. But it's just, it's crazy. Baby brain is a really real thing, by the way. How you forget things is, it does happen during pregnancy. Seriously, you, as you can see, I'm totally not putting it on. Can't for the life of me remember the name of the car seat that I see all the time, a hundred times a day in the street. Cannot remember it. What is it called? It's some Maxi Cozy. Yes, <laughs> thank God. You know, you just can't remember and you just like you just feel so triumphant now. <laughs> Crazy. Maxi Cozy, okay? The Maxi Cozy compared to the B Safe and the Aton Q, incomparable, I think. The Maxi Cozy, if you put just put them next to each other and have a look yourself. Maxi Cozy looks amateur. It, look, it looks like. It isn't very good for the money. I think, and also, Maxi Cozy, they don't specialise in baby car seats. But Be Safe, which is produced in, in um, it's made in Sweden. Um, and the Aton Q, which is made in Germany. Um, they specialise in car seats and they're much better, much safer and look better. The baby will sit in it better, better protected and, um, you know, it's so much better. So go for one of those. I would recommend the um, the Be Safe or the Aton Q. We went for the Aton Q in a um, like a like a bluey colour. So so yeah. So that, so that's my that's my tip there. I'm so I'm so glad I remembered the name Max Cozy. But make sure that your car seat obviously clips on to your to your pram and make sure they go, they go. So our Aton Q does fit the eye candy. Okay, so baby changing bag, like I've never bought, I was like, baby changing, what, like, you know, what? you're going to carry this bag around with you everywhere, so it's important, find something that is, you know, that you that you like, first of all, but that is also really, um, what's the word, like practical, so I went with this one, the Yummy Mummy um, pink lining range, and I went for the this colour because it goes with the um, colour that I've chosen for the pram, which is truffle, which is like a greyish colour. So um, it, this is really, really cool. You can buy you can buy this, I think, online as well, but I bought it from John Lewis. So um, it comes with one of these pouches that you can put the dirty nappies in and zip it up and keeps all the smell away. It comes with one of these baby mats. So you can change the baby on them and it's really cute and everything matches and it's pink and nice and it comes with like little pockets inside um you know for the bottle and for compartments and zips and everything and you can put your purse and your your stuff you know whatever you want so there's the space and it's a good size and I really like it and also um a friend of mine recommended it and said that they stay new the longest and it's an easy wipe one for god's sake don't get anything that is a material that you can't actually clean this is a material you can actually just wipe and clean so it stays new longer because you want to keep it for, you know, you'll need it for a couple of years or whatever. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's what we went for. Um, right, okay, so um, I've been, this is turning out to be quite a long video. I should have done this in a couple of chunks. But yeah, so we went on Baby Moon and had a photo shoot. You've seen some of our pictures in my last vlog. And I had a baby shower with lots of awesome games that my friend Gemma organised. And I will do another vlog or a vlog talking about some of the games and things. Tweet me any questions you have at Melody underscore Hussaini. Find me on Facebook, Melody Hussaini in brackets The Apprentice. Or Instagram at Melody underscore Hussaini. And just, um, you know, uh, let me know any questions that you have, any way that I can help. And follow the vlog and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And, uh, and yeah, so the baby's due in just over a week and I look forward to the journey ahead. So far it's only been pregnancy and I have endless things to say, so imagine once the baby comes. I wish you all the best and anyone who's carrying a child, you're doing an incredible thing and becoming a mum is such a privilege and I really look forward to the journey ahead and balancing that with business and lots of other things that are important to me, um, you know, with Inspiring Gage and the work that we're doing and supporting communities through social enterprise. 
and um, I will keep you updated and uh, yeah probably through Instagram all of my journey in pictures um, sending you all lots of love and yeah let me know what you think of the video bye